Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, a few things to go over. Uh, I want to cover the uh, latest alpha release uh, that I put out a couple days ago. Uh, some of you guys might have noticed uh, it contained a kind of a band-aid for an issue that I was running into, uh, or at least that was brought in brought up to me. Um, it wasn't an issue that I was having, but somebody was able to point it out to me. Um, where the application would hang uh, whenever uh, any change uh, was made to the highlighted window. Uh, that is, like if you switched uh, the actively viewed window, the application mapping would hang. Um, and it wasn't noticeable to me for a couple reasons. One, first of all, um, I have an overly beefy computer here. Uh, that I can't really expect other people to have, and two, because it was only affecting mappings, uh, so it wasn't noticed until somebody was actually using the controller as a mouse um, that they saw that that mapping actually uh, froze up during use switching between windows. Uh, so, as a temporary band-aid, um, I added an option to uh, disable the active app watcher. Um, thus eliminating that hang that happens in between because it, it was obvious that when that window was switching is when the hang occurred. Uh, so there was only one real thing that it could have been. Uh, so adding that setting in, uh, the user confirmed that that did fix it. There was no more hitch. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working on the active app watching section of code and uh, sending that into a... Sorry about that, guys. Got my phone on. Um, I'll be sending that into a separate thread uh, that's not part of the actual mapping thread. Uh, so that shouldn't take very long. Uh, and that should fix the issue if it exists in a separate thread so it's not creating a blockage for any other work that the input mapper is doing. Um, the other thing I added was mouse scrolling as a mapping. Um, that was just something I overlooked and I didn't add in. It was easy enough to add that in, so... Um, that's the latest alpha release that has those fixes. Um, I am going to currently work on, like I said, uh, getting that active app watcher into a separate uh, thread. And then I'll put out another alpha. And then after that, I have to work on something that's going to take a little bit longer. Um, it turns out that the method that I'm using for the uh, actual like the channel lookup finding the actual property within the object uh, that has the channel states is creating too much overhead um, and some plan changes I have would uh, multiply that to the point where it was going to create more overhead than I was willing to accept um, uh, a simple explanation is uh, in input mapper there exists these objects that have all the properties which are the channels of your either input device or output device or pretty much any device that input mapper can think of um, they all exist in separate uh, objects and each of those channels or properties within those objects so in order for input mapper to know that channel a uh, should map to channel a of these two separate properties um, if you just look at the actual references to those properties, they don't, they aren't the same. They don't match. Input Mapper doesn't know to connect those two together because they come from separate objects. So the way to fix that was I was accessing these channels by uh, string, by the actual name of the property alone, uh, and that had to be converted into a generic that wasn't type specific, uh, thus a string lookup. And the way for me to do that was to use something called fast member, where uh, instead of the the actual property, um, you know, channel A, uh, it was just a string that said channel A, and that's how it knew to match those up. Uh, unfortunately, fast member, um, despite its name, has a couple drawbacks. Uh, one of which it doesn't actually look to make sure that the property exists prior to trying to pull or set a value for it, uh, meaning it would throw an error if it was trying to, uh, for instance, I'm mapping uh, a 3D mouse like this to a virtual controller. Uh, the virtual controller might look to see what the state of 
uh, things like left trigger, right trigger, etc., are, and the device uh, state type doesn't have those definitions because it's just a 3D mouse. It doesn't have all those extra buttons. So it would try to pull those channel uh, values and when it, it would throw an error. So what I did to combat that was I had to add something called reflection uh, into every single channel lookup. Uh, and what the reflection did was it actually went into that type, it got a list of all the properties, and it would see if the property that it wants to get the value for is one that actually exists prior to trying to get it. Um, excuse me. All that is fine and well. Uh, it worked fine. It's worked fine up until now. Uh, the only issue with it is anybody that's worked uh, with C Sharp knows the reflection carries with it more overhead than we would like. Um, it wasn't really much overhead to where it was noticeable. Uh, actually, it, there's no way it could have been noticeable to you guys. Um, in my own little uh, tests, I was able to do uh, 100,000 lookups, I think, in like uh, 6,000 milliseconds, something like that. Uh, so that is still still well within easily acceptable parameters. Uh, but the issue is that now I'm getting to a state where, uh, especially with macros, I want to be able to add another layer in there to where it's merging a third uh, device state object. Uh, so you have not only your source device state and your output device state, but I also wanted to throw another one in the middle, which was an override device state. And that would contain values that came from things like uh, macros and stuff like that. Uh, because, you know, to, to, despite what your input and output mapping might be, you know, channel 1 equals channel 1 here, you might want to have a macro that says, well, I don't care what the input device says, for the time being, channel 1 is actually going to equal this. Uh, so because of that, um, it was essentially going to double the overhead, uh, because that um, lookup would have to be performed each time that you're merging two of those together and there would need to be two merges in order to merge three objects together. So uh, that was something that I wasn't willing to accept. Uh, I didn't want to double the lookup even though, again, you guys probably wouldn't notice it because the uh, overhead is still so minimal. Um, it's Looking forward, it's still not something I wanted to do. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to an earlier um, concept that I had that I scrapped very early, which was to use dictionary lookups for all the device states and channel states and all that. Um, and what this will mean is actually not only are we going to be getting even faster mappings than what we were current than what we are currently getting. Um, even without that, you know, third layer in there, um, a single layer uh, dictionary lookup behaves faster than a single layer does with the reflection. Uh, so not only will we be getting better mapping speeds, uh, I will also be getting extra benefits where the dictionary itself already has a string lookup uh, that's already, you know, hashed and cached and all that stuff. Uh, as part of the actual dictionary type itself, meaning I can use those values uh, a lot more easily in things like macros. Um, I can use them, uh, pass them back and forth between the custom C sharp uh, macro action that I created. Uh, so you can, as part of my future plans for that, input the string name of a channel and it can pass that channel value as a parameter into whatever function you write in C Sharp, and then you can even bounce something back out uh, and assign that to it. Uh, so there'll be a lot of benefits, um, but unfortunately a lot of changes have to happen, uh, especially in any way that the UI interacts with these device states or channel states or channel names or all that. Uh, there's gonna have to be a lot of converters written to access these um, these new properties that are going to exist inside of a dictionary now instead of just actually a class object. Uh, so what I'm going to do is starting this week, I'm going to start that change. And since the code uh, that uses some of these class objects are so old, I mean, I haven't touched a lot of this code for like a year. 
Um, it's hard for me to really guess how much work is ahead of me uh, once I start this. Um, pretty much, yeah, I'm going to just take it as it comes. I'm going to, you know, start to change and then see what errors pop up in various program, in various uh, parts of the program and, you know, correct them as they occur. So uh, I don't really have a time frame for when I'll be able to release a new alpha that's going to have this change in it. Um, it is going to change a lot of things in the documentation that I already started, uh, which is unfortunate, which is why I hate doing documentation when I'm in the alpha state, because it's always changing. But uh, unfortunately, this is, uh, I believe this is necessary. Um, especially looking forward, if I even want to consider adding even more layers onto the mapping, uh, for whatever reason, this is absolutely necessary. Um, for instance, um, I hesitate saying this because I don't want somebody to hold me to it, but I was also considering adding in uh, the functionality that I had in Input Mapper 2.0, which uh, allowed people to write custom plugins that were actual connectors uh, for the input output mapping. Uh, meaning, um, uh, most of the ways that the mapping goes from uh, the source to the output. In input mapper uh, 1.7, it's hard coded into input mapper 1.7, uh, which is why that mapping options window is starting to become so cluttered and large. Uh, because I'm trying to think of all these possible ways you might want to connect the source to the output, and I'm having to put all of those into, you know, the mapping override, which is starting to become a little too uh, complicated uh, for, well, at least from. Uh, first glance, it looks too complicated to probably most people just wanting to do simple mappings. Um, but those of those of you that wanted complex mappings um, need those options. But anyways, um, I was thinking of the possibility of adding those connectors in there, where uh, if you want to map, you know, the source of the destination, but you wanted to do it in some fancy uh, way, you could add those connectors in as you know layers or steps that happen in between that source and destination. So uh, if that's even going to be a possibility down the road, I need to make this change now before I get going down this path any further. So um, that's about it, guys. I will keep you apprised. And I hope this audio has worked because I don't feel like recording this for a third time. Have a good one, guys.